This will be a short tutorial about Visual Basic. So what is Visual Basic? Visual Basic is an object-oriented programming language designed by Microsoft. The word basic in its name means that it's meant for beginners. Visual Basic has a very simple syntax and it's easy to learn, which is why it's called basic. So I'm going to be discussing first the parts of the IDE that I will be using, which is Microsoft Visual Studio. The version of Microsoft Visual Studio that I will be using is Visual Studio Express 12. If you're going to be using another version, then most of the parts will still be the same. However, the arrangement or the look might be different. Over here at the top, we can see our menu bar. And underneath the menu bar is our toolbar. And then these are like every Windows application has a menu bar and a toolbar. In the menu bar we can see the current file, edit, view, project, build, and so on. And in the menu bar and in toolbar, we can navigate backward, we can create a new project, open a new file, save, we can run the pro current project, and so on. Over here to the right, we can see our solution explorer. The solution explorer allows us to browse the currently open project which is Windows Application 1 and the project files underneath this. Underneath the Solution Explorer is the Properties window. In the Properties window we can see the various properties that, the various properties of the form that we are creating. So for example we can see the current properties of Form 1. Here we can see its name, we can see the size, we can see the text along with various other properties. Over to the middle in the middle we can see the form design where we design the actual form and on the left we can see our toolbox where we can see the various things that we can place for in our form so first we can play we can see the various things that we can place in our form so first let's talk about identifiers identifiers are names that are given to variables constants or methods. There are various limitations to identifiers. First, identifiers can only be composed of letters, numbers, or underscores. You can't have an identifier named student ID. <coughs> this will be an invalid identifier because of the apostrophe and because of the spacebar. Student's ID is an invalid identifier, but student's underscore ID is a valid identifier. The second limitation of identifiers is that they can't start with the number. So your, so your identifier can't be named to form, but your identifier can be named form 2 or form 3. Your, your identifier cannot start with a number. The third limitation for identifiers is that they can't be named after a reserved keyword so you can't so you can't name your identifier public you can't name your identifier double you can't name your identifier string or etc finally the last limitation for identifiers is that they can't be any longer than 40 characters <coughs> next let's talk about variables variables can you are used to store and hold information just like in math, variables can be used to represent something. First, let's talk about how to declare variables. The syntax for declaring variables is dim space, the name of the variable, or its identifier, which for example, I'll be using number, space as, then space the data type. Now, there are various data types that we can use for variables. First is the integer. The value for the integer, an integer is a 32-bit signed integer which means that its value lies between negative 32,768 to positive 32,767. If you're going to use a number that's larger than an integer, then you're going to want to use the long data type, which represents a 64-bit sign integer ranging from negative 2 million to positive 2 million. If you're going to be using even larger numbers, there is the single and the double data type, and if you're going to be using a decimal, then there is the decimal data there is the decimal data type. <coughs> the decimal data type is a floating point position decimal number. What if your variable isn't a number? For example, it's a word. Then you can use the string data type. 
the string is it represents text. It used to represent text, and it can hold up to two billion characters. If you're only going to be holding a single character, then it's the best that you use the data type char, which represents only a single character, which has a code point from zero to sixty-five thousand five hundred thirty-six. If you go now, the last data type is the boolean. The boolean only has two values. It's either true or it's false. And then let's talk about assigning values to variables. So here I'm going to assign a value to the variable word. We can do this by typing the name of the identifier, an equal sign, and the value that we want to store to this identifier. So now the value of the true the value of the word variable is true. Let's add another variable. Let's declare the n variable number as an integer and then here we set the value for number as 32,000. So the value for number now will be 32,000. Let's talk about operands. Visual Studio, Visual Basic has various operands that we can use. For numbers, the basic operands are, as everybody knows, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Then there is integer division, which is like division, except it's rounded to an integer. There is modulo. Modulo is the remainder when the first number is divided by the second number. There is exponentiation. There is exponentiation. And finally, there are parentheses, which can be used to establish grouping. There is an order of operations in Visual Basic. So, the vario so an expression will be executed starting with the parentheses, next the, uh, next the exponent, then multiplication and division, then integer division, modulo, and finally addition and subtraction. So for example, the statement 9 plus 3 times 5 raised, 5 raised to 2, the first thing that will be evaluated will be 9 plus 3, which will evaluate to 12 then 5 squared which will evaluate to 25 and finally the interpreter will multiply these two numbers together and the result will be 300 so the value of number in this case will be 300 there are also other operands used to compare the value of two variables which will be discussed when we which we will be talking about once we discuss conditionals so let's discuss conditionals already so, what are conditionals? Conditionals are statements that when the, val when the conditional is true, then it will run it. So, for example, the basic conditional is the if. If, followed by the condition, which I'll be explaining later, followed by then, followed by this. If this condition is true, then it will do this. If this condition is not true, then it won't do this. Simple as that. <coughs> <coughs> so for the syntax for the condition, we can either use the equal sign represents equal to. So this will evaluate to true if word if the variable word is equal to the variable number. Then there's also not equal to, which will evaluate to true if the wor variable word is not equal to the variable number. There is less than, there is greater than, there is less than or equal to, and there is greater than or equal to, which are also used as comparative operators. Furthermore, in conditionals, there is also the else if. There is also the else if. Now, the else if, if the first if statement does not evaluate the true, that is, if this statement evaluates the false, then visual base, then basic will evaluate this statement. And if this statement is true, then the program will do that. So, and then finally, there is the else, else part, where if this is false, and this is false, and everything else before this is false, then the program will execute this or those those the program will execute those so let's have an example let's have two numbers let's have two numbers number one and number two 
And then let's set the value for number 1 to be 5 and number 2 to be 10. So if num let's set this and then let's have another conditional if number 1 is less than number 2 and finally this. So here's the problem. Which one of these statements will be executed once the program runs? So let's try interpreting this. The value of number 1 is 5 and the value of number 2 is 10. So the program will start with this if number 1 is equal to number 2. So it will start number 1 is 5, number 2 is 10. So number 1 is equal to number 2, 5 is equal to 10. That will evaluate the false. So it won't do this. Next it will do this. If then it will do the else if condition. It will analyze the else if condition if number 1 is less than number 2. And in this case, it's true. 5 is less than 10. So in this case, the program will do that. What if our numbers are instead 15 and 10? So the program will start from this. If number 1 equals number 2, which evaluates the false, then it will move to the next line. Else if number 1 is less than number 2, which also evaluates the false since 15 is not less than 10. Finally, it will go to else, and then it will evaluate those. So that's it for conditionals. Now, let's make a form. So I'm going to make a short form for an example. Uh, let's create a form that when you enter something, it will determine if the character you entered is less than 100 or greater than 100. Very simple program. So first, let's add a label. First, let's add a label to our form. We're going to label our input. And then let's name the label. Let's call it input. Okay? Then, we're going to have our text box <coughs> next to our label. <coughs> next to our label over here. And then we're going to name the text box. We're going to give it the identifier txt input. I'm going to add txt different. So I will always remember that txt input is a text box. It's a good programming practice. And then let's add another label. This time to label the output text box. Let's call it output. And then let's have another text box. Let's have another text box. And then this will be called txt output and we want the program to run once a button is pressed so let's place a button let's place the button let's call this button run and we want our program to start we want the program to start once the button run is clicked so let's go to our code first let's create variables to store the value of input and the value of output since input and output are both integers, I am going to be declaring them as integers and not decimals since we're only dealing with integers. Now, now let's create the event. So once you double click this, the event will automatically be filled into you by Visual Studio. And then underneath this, so this event will happen once the run button is clicked. So if you click the run button, whatever happens underneath here will be executed so let's try this so first let's set the value of the va of input to be to get the value of this text box which is text dot input dot text text input dot text is a variable is a variable referring to the va whatever the text that is placed in text input now text input dot text alone is a string and input is an integer so the types aren't the same <coughs> so to make this work we're going to place a val stands for value it converts a string into an integer so our string so for example if we enter this the string 100 will be converted to the integer 100 okay and then let's add an if statement to test if the value of input is less than 100. If input is less than 100, then we want output to be we want output to be 0. Else 
if the input is greater than or else, if the input is not less than 100, we want the output to equal 1. Finally, let's place the out let's place the output into the text output into the text output text box by stating text output dot txt dot txt which refers to the text that is in the text box and we're going to set it to the value of output so this is a very simple program let's try running it so we press the start button and then it's running the program as we speak first it's compiled here okay so let's try if our input is less than 100 and we press the run button the output is 0 if our input is greater than or equal to 100 then the output will be 1 it's a very simple program <coughs> it's a very simple program so we're going to make this uh, a bit more complicated in the next part in the next parts so the next thing we're going to do is to write a program given the input we are going to output if it's even if it's uh, if it's positive if it's negative or if it is zero so we're still going to use the same things input and output except this time output will be a string why will output be a string because we want output to be the string positive or negative or zero so same thing, input will be the value of input text. And then, instead of this condition, we're going to have another condition. First, let's test if it's equal to 0. If input is equal to 0, then let output be equal to 0, the string 0. Else, if the input is less than 0, <coughs> then let the output be negative. Else, if the input is not equal to 0, and if the input is not less than 0, then that means that the only choice for the input is that it will be positive. So, we have the value of output, and then we're going to set the, out, the value of the text output dot text, or the text inside the text box text output, into the current value of output. Wait, uh, almost missed it. Okay, so let's run this program. Let's see. So if we press 60 and we run it so it's positive if it's 0 it's 0 and if you type a negative number then it will be negative it's neat cool okay so let's try another thing what if let's add another condition now I want to say that if the number is positive I want to let out if it's either even or odd so let's have another t another text box for this I'm going to call this text output 2. I'm going to call this text output 2. Not going to label it. So let's have another variable to store the value of output. Let's name it output 2. Now the value of output 2 will either be odd or even or it will be blank. It will be blank if the number is negative or zero. Okay? So if output, so same thing, if input is zero, then output will be 0 and output 2 will be blank if it's negative then output 2 will also be blank and if it's positive then we're going to have another if we're going to test if input modulo 2 is equal to 0 Modul if input modulo 2 is equal to 0 if input modulo 2 is equal to 0 then that means that the number is even this is because of the properties of modulo and then, if the output is not even, then that means that the output is odd. Alright? And then we're going to set the text output to. We're going to set the value of the text output to text box to the current value of output to. So let's run this program. So let's have a number like, uh, let's have a 0. So 0, this will be blank. Let's have a number, an odd positive number, so it's positive and odd. If we place a negative number, it's negative, and this will be blank. And then if we place an even positive number, it'll be positive and it'll be even. Let's add, finally, let's add another functionality, a clear button, to clear everything, to clear the values of 
the text down. The text the text that's inputted. Let's call this the button button clear. And then let's the text be clear. <coughs> so if the clear button is clicked, we want to set the value of text of this and the value of text of this and the value of text of this to blank. So there are two 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 ways to clear the value of a text box. We can either to text input dot clear or we can do text input text is equal to like that. Either way is acceptable. I'm going to be using the fourth the first one. So let's set text output equals clear. And then text output two is equal to clear. So when we press the button clear button, so when we press button clear button, it will clear the output, it will clear whatever is there. So it's like, it's like that. And then let's add our final functionality. Let's have a message box appear. So if the number is odd, let's have a message box appear. And then let's have a message box appear. And let it say that the number is odd. Yeah, number is odd. Okay. And then let's see. Let's let's see our program. The full program. Zero. Zero. It's negative. Negative. If it's even, it's positive even. And if it's odd, it's positive odd, it's pos it will appear in message box saying the number is odd and then the positive odd will clear and the clear button. So this is just a very basic overview of what we can do with Visual Studio. I hope you enjoyed our tutorial together. Uh, so this is once again, this is Carl Joshua Kinas and I'll be signing off. Rock and roll to the world.